I'm Matthew Dalitz from the Science of Psychotherapy and here is a quick snippet from our podcast where I'm talking to Richard Hill about some of the neurobiological processes behind his mirroring hands. The best thing to do was to work at your problem for uh, uh, until you got frustrated, then stop, go do something else and pretty much uh, it will pop into your head somewhere along the way. Now we've, we've had some insight into what this is neurobiologically and we were talking about it a bit when we had our previous Q&A about the default mode network. Mm. And this idea that in the default mode, you, you, you move out of um, uh, directed, self-directed activity, which is very frontal lobe, uh, and you move into a sort of a daydreaming, sort of a, a, a semi-inward type of process. And it tends to light up the front and the, the, the back mm -hmm. uh, areas of the brain and it tends to be very eye oriented and it's very much about getting into yourself now this can be really terrific if you're okay but not so terrific if you've got internal traumas negative what we call the negative inner voice those negative experiences and suddenly you can find that a battlefield right and yeah and when we were talking we we're talking about maybe we we're talking about meditation that that seemed to quieten those areas mm -hmm. and there was a drop down uh, particularly in the the rear area the occipital and in some of the parietal and there was a drop of act into activity there of which the client was not the, the 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 participant was not necessarily terribly aware of what was going on then there was sort of like nothing and there was uh, then an area would light up around the the frontal area the in the temporal lobe and the and the prefrontal and the frontal cortex and about four or five seconds later an idea would pop into the prefrontal cortex and be verbalized right yeah now something happened in between the drop down and and moving into here and we don't know what it is and the only way to really describe it is to just look at the experience you know there's a lot of things that pop into our conscious awareness that we don't know where they come from i'm hungry that wonderful statement i'm sad i'm happy i'm in love all these things emerge out of much broader and much more uh, extensive implicit processes, which mm. to some degree we're doing research to find out what's going on. Um, and we keep trying to say it's this, it's that, but really it's all of these things working in a self-organizing systemic way to produce something that is better. Right. And this is what healing is all about. This is what problem solving is all about. And it's really a self process mm. and not a externally driven process. So therapy is not best done as an external imposition on the client. It's best done as a interactive relational experience of responsiveness from the therapist right. that enables the client to facilitate their own healing problem solving experience. And when I say responsiveness from the therapist, sometimes it's just relational engagement, but sometimes it's coming up with a therapeutic process or coming up with a bit of um, neuroscientific uh, data that might be useful for them. It's the combining of 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 brains of minds of experiences into this whole therapeutic frame mm. remembering that when they come to us they're not in a therapeutic frame they want to be but they're in a, a frame that what we call the disrupting frame or disrupting consciousness where the blocks and barriers interferences and traumas and negative ideas that are stopping that process well, if you want to know more about the science of psychotherapy, come across to our website, thescienceofpsychotherapy.com, and our podcast of the same name, and learn more about the science of you.